Now we'll double record. So we'll definitely have a copy of it between us, one, one, one side of the ocean and then the other side of the ocean. So it's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm super excited that you're here because Today, I'm joined by my very good friend, Robert Murray, who is the high performance coach who's been trained by Brendan Burchard himself. He is absolutely amazing. He's connected with some really, really awesome people. And today is going to be a different kind of show because guess what? We're all on a journey. We want different things. We are heading in different directions, but guess what? We're all on our own personal journey. And the biggest kind of um, obstacle that we face sometimes in our journey is the fact that we don't know who to go to to ask for the answers to the questions that we have and who can actually show us the way, the stepping stones that we need to step on in order to go where we want to go. So today, Robert and I decided to do something really special for you guys. What we're going to do is we're going to share with you our networking tips and these are not going to be the conventional stuff that you find on blogs and websites but it's something that we have both learned over time going through many different experiences connecting with lots of amazing people um, and we want to share with you the non-conventional networking tips on how you actually find connect and build relationship with top influencers top thought leaders industry experts and anybody else that you want to connect to and robert's got some really amazing people in his life he's got mentors uh, and really amazing friends I mean he's connected to Brendan Burchard and his inner circle of high performance coaches so you can just imagine the amount of value that Robert will be bringing to this conversation and with me you have seen the kind of guests that I've had on the show everybody from Dory Clark to Mr. Robert Murray himself so you can see that I have managed to connect and build relationship with also some really amazing people. So we're both going to share all that with you. So with that, without much further ado, Robert, welcome to the show and let's do this. I'm super excited about this. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, it's funny because we've been talking about doing like a little ensemble show a couple of times and we finally pulled it off. And the, the really cool thing about this is that I'm doing this right in the middle of a three-day event, a three-day live event with people where I've gotten to practice things in real time. And, and a lot of the things that, that I did share is things that I have time-tested by going to perhaps 50 or 70 events over the last two years, wow. over and over again, watching people, some of the best of the best who have have really dialed in the networking and then also experimenting in real time with what works and what doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, this is fun. This is exciting to, uh, to really just have a conversation with you about what, you know, what you found works and uh, to share some of the things that I found works really well in, in the world of networking. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm super grateful that you are taking time out of a three day event to actually come back home to just record this and then you're going to be going back there. So I really appreciate it. But you know, for, for the audience, I mean, everybody's on their own journey and what we're just hoping to do is just show them some of the, some of the ways that we have found success in our networking and how we have managed to connect with people. Because at the end of the day, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So the people you spend the most time with, they won't all always have the answers to the questions that you're looking for. They wouldn't have accomplished the same um, you know, level of success that maybe you want to accomplish in your life. So where, who do you turn to, right? Like where do you go? And that's the big question that we want to solve for the audience today. And we want to show them how they can go from zero to a hundred by accelerating their, their network, by, by upgrading mm -hmm. their network. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because one of the things that I've realized going into an event like this is one of the most important foundational steps for networking is getting okay with yourself first. Mm. And that doesn't seem, you know, like what, you know, don't you need to learn tricks and strategies and tactics and everything. And so no, actually, I, I would say you probably are better off not even getting in your own head that much about, strategies and tactics and what you normally think networking is because I don't know about you I've gone to dozens of events where the traditional they, they, they posed it as a networking event or you go into it with the expectation of networking and what I've done in that is oh I'm gonna go I'm making a decision right off the bat I'm gonna go because there's somebody there who can do something for me and that's why I want to go 
And if I don't think there's anybody there that anyone who's a potential customer, anyone who's a potential contact, a potential mentor, then it's like, oh, I'm not going to go to that. I don't want to waste my time at another one of those events, which is that whole mindset is one of the first things to like just throw out on the topic of networking if you want to be effective at doing it, because it's really not about us. It's about in some ways, trusting our own intuition of whether it's right or not to go to an event. And it's probably better off to think about, do I have something of value to add to that event? Can I contribute to it? And if I go in with the idea that I'm going to an event, there may be somebody's life I can touch. There may be somebody that I can help. There may be somebody that I can contribute to. Uh, then my whole idea of networking just shifts. So probably my top tip going into any networking event is to know in my own heart that I have value to offer, being okay with myself, and just being, uh, well, they talk about integrity, but, but having the integrity of like who, I, who I'm trying to be, who I want to be, who I'm growing into, and what I'm doing are aligned with each other. And I know that even as I am, I have value to add to myself without having to get somebody else into my life for more information or more praise or anything from somebody. Yeah. And that's a brilliant point, Robert, because for most people, they struggle with that. They're like, I'm going to this event or I'm, you know, going to this party, whatever it is. And there's going to be lots of really amazing people who are like maybe light years ahead. So what do I have to offer them? But it's really important. I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head that you have something to offer simply because your own experience is unique. Nobody else is like you. They do, haven't walked the same path in life. And so you do have something unique to offer them. Maybe it's not going to be like a million dollar contract, but hey, it might just be a resource that you've come across, an article you have read, something that actually helps them in their journey. But you will have something to some of something of value to add to them. It's just a matter of getting in there and starting a conversation. And through the conversation, you'll be able to figure out how you can add value to them. So I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 exactly right. And, and, and really just be looking for those opportunities. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that I've done going into event is just to be super curious, like intentionally. And, and one question I run through my mind, other than just the reminding myself to be curious, is to always be asking, what is this person doing? What are they focused on? And what help do they need? And how can I offer them help? And sometimes it's not just things that I know, it could be connections that they're looking for. It can be resources that I can direct them to, or it can be something something that I, I share. So it's really just that constant question in my mind. How, what is this person looking for? How can I add value right now? Exactly. And you might not be able to add value to them right in that moment, but through a conversation, what you'll be able to do is find out where they need help, what are they excited about, what are the challenges, etc. And then maybe, hey, next week you come across somebody and you're like, oh, I know, like they were looking for somebody, you know, who can help them with marketing. And, you know, this person does marketing, maybe I can make that connection. Or maybe it's a resource you come across like, oh, look, you know, here's this wonderful resource that can actually help them get their product or their message into the mainstream media and you can you know introduce them to that resource or the fact that maybe you can um, you know uh, help them yourself so you walk away you go home and and you you actually learn something over time in the next you know few weeks you do a online course on marketing and then you turn around it's like oh you know what that person wanted some help with marketing I can totally help them now but it might not be mm -hmm. in that moment so you know, for most people, when they say, what do I have to offer them? Well, just go there, start a conversation. And as a conversation flows, you will be able to find opportunities where you can add value to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes even by lead, leading by example, I, I had an interesting conversation uh, at, after the event, everybody went down to the hotel lobby for wine and they were just talking and I was sharing something about myself, which didn't necessarily, um, uh, it, it wasn't flattering in the normal sense of the world. I, w I was sharing uh, how I found myself being jealous of a colleague because she was so good. I mean, wow. she was just that good. And that I, I shared a story that uh, when we were first starting to work together, I turned over and I looked at her and I said, I think I have a lot to learn from you, mm. you know, which was, was humbling on my part, you know, because she's, you know, 20, 
20 something years younger than, than, than I am. Uh, you know, supposedly I was coming in as, you know, let's say a senior guy or, or somebody more seasoned, if you want to say that <laughs> nice way of saying older, but, but she was just that good. And when I was telling this story with one of the, one of the attendees over wine, she said, that was inspirational. Thanks for being the kind of person who would be so aware and so humble of, that, that he can see that he has a lot to learn from other people. And leading by example, I was adding value, but I was adding value through a moment of vulnerability. Mm, yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. The fact that you were vulnerable, but at the same time, you know, you, you, you're actually recognizing the fact that openly that you have a lot to learn from somebody who's actually younger than you. So you are being vulnerable, but sharing the story, I think that's really powerful as well, where you actually share a story and you establish a common ground, a common ground of experience where you're just like, Oh yeah, you know, I can share this story with this person. And then they're like, Oh yeah, I can totally relate to your story. I can, that, that totally happened to me as well. Perfect. Like there you go. Connection, right? Cause to me, networking yeah. is all about connection. Yeah. And the quickest way to build connection, this is coming from Robert Cialdini in his, you know, all his wonderful book, uh, sorry, wonderful work on uh, psychology and, and networking and everything like that. And his book, which is uh, called Influence. Uh, and it's all about establishing a common ground of experience, something that you have mm -hmm. to share commonly. And, and that's wonderful. So I love that. But what, what, do you, what was special about her, Robert? Like what made her so exceptional at networking? Uh, well, actually, you know, so not this, this particular person, she was so good as a coach, which was one right. of the things that really surprised me. Uh, the thing that was interesting about the person that I was talking to is that then she was super curious with me and she was so present. So this is, this is one of the, the superpowers that I've noticed in networking. And this woman who I was telling the story to actually demonstrated it for me. And uh, we've had that was the first night we've had multiple follow-up conversations, including an hour long conversation yeah. the following day, because she made a, a huge difference in my life by sharing things. But she was so present that she knew the exact right questions to ask. And she didn't just take my surface answers mm. when she was asking me questions like, well, what does that mean? Why do you think you actually did that? What do you think that ties to? Why, are you, why is that so important to you? Why are you so driven to do this? And I was talking, you know, in that particular case about, you know, connecting people to a mission that matters and connecting people to uh, a purpose and to each other and teams. And I said, it really has to do with connection. And she's like, is it really connection? And I'm like, yeah, I think it's really connection for me. That's been my common thing. And it's like, hmm, okay. Let's explore it a little bit. And then we dialed it in a little bit more. And she's like, maybe it's the wanting to be wanted. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and then it's like when people hit those things, it's like, uh, yeah, tears are coming to my eyes. I think maybe you're right. But it's being so dialed in and so present in a conversation when you're networking that you are hearing the story behind the story. You are hearing the desire behind the desire. You are hearing the need behind the need. That, that is when network mastery occurs, when you're yeah. looking for those things. And it only happens when you're, you're listening deeply to the person and not just what they're saying, but what they're saying behind that, uh, which I think really is, is, is a skill that, that you can develop, you can get really good at it, but it's not something that happens by accident. It's something you intentionally practice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so far we've, we've covered some really amazing stuff and, and it all ties in very nicely. The first thing we talked about was make sure you go there to add value, like wherever you're going, whoever you're connecting with, you do it to add value. The next thing we talked about was being vulnerable, being open, being vulnerable and being curious. Mm -hmm. And right now you again, you know, another thing you mentioned, which I think fits in absolutely perfectly is being present, be totally present. Don't think about anything else. Don't think about, you know, who's talking to who and what's going on over there. And are they talking about this thing? Just be totally present and be with that person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny too, because those are all the things that, you know, I, I've certainly seen and, and I hate about networking. It's when people 
it, it, there's a track going on in our minds all the time. There's, there's always a story going on in our heads, at least if you're, if you're me, and I'm assuming other people are like this. There's always this conversation going on with your head, even though you're having a conversation with the, the other person. And the conversation usually runs to, huh, I wonder if this person could be a customer. I wonder what they could do. I wonder if they can mm -hmm. teach me something that I need to know. I wonder if they'll whatever you know, something that I can get. And then there's that other conversation of, oh, I wonder if I'm wasting my time talking to this person. Maybe that person that I'm seeing over there, that's a big name podcaster. I want to go talk to him and see if I can get on his, his show or something. There's that, those voices. And that being presence is really just noticing that those voices are there and ignoring them and paying, you know, drawing our attention back to the person that's right in front of us, because that's when that, that real connection is established. Absolutely. And I'm very glad that you mentioned that because the the conversation you talked about that's running inside your head, I think that that really needs to be swapped with, you know, with something, something more positive, something along mm -hmm. the lines. And this is something that, you know, the conversation that I have in my head when I'm with somebody and that is one, um, how can I you know, drop so much love on this person that they become by my biggest fan? Mm hmm. So not in the sense that I'm superior to them, like, you know, and, and then they, they are my fan and they're looking up to me. But the fact is like, we, we, we actually essentially start to develop a, such a deep connection in, in those few moments that it seems like we have been in, you know, we've known each other for a very, very long time. And we, we become each other's fans because as I am there, I'm also trying to learn about them. You know, I'm trying mm -hmm. to add value to them. So my, the conversation I have is like, how can I actually turn them into my biggest fan and how can I be their biggest fan and their biggest supporter with what they're doing in their life and, uh, and how I can help them on their journey. And that's the conversation I think that if you have really puts you in a solid stance to build those, you know, really long lasting solid relationships. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because then you're real. Mm. Yeah. You know? Oh, that, yeah. Then, then, then you're a real, uh, you're a real person. You're making a connection on a human to human level. Absolutely. And um, one, one other thing that I would like to mention here is that don't hold back. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time, you know, you also have that thing like if I if I give like everything, then like I won't have anything. I won't be holding on to anything, and you know, they they might be able to get ahead of me or whatever, right? You have that kind of conversation right at the back of your head, really tiny voice, but it'll be there somewhere. I know mm -hmm. it's gonna be there. So you know, you you have to counteract that. And um, though the way I think about it is the fact that I'm not gonna hold anything back if I can help this person with you know, through connections, through my time, through my energy, uh, through, you know, any resources that I have, anything at all, then I'm going to help. I'm just going to go there and help them. Right? Exactly. And I'm exactly. not going to hold back because what happens is that th that's when you really, truly being genuine. And, and that can be sense. Like other people will turn around and be just like, you know, I, wow, like I didn't, ex I've, nobody's ever done something like that for me because everybody's expected something back, right? But you're right. so open, so genuine that I am, I, I can I can absolutely see that. And I've had loads of people, I don't know about you, Robert, I'm sure people have turned around and said that to you because I know just how open and genuine you are. But people have turned around to me and just like, wow, this is amazing. Like nobody's ever, you know, done this bit or, or nobody's ever dealt with me this way before because you're so giving, so open and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you know, it's a hundred percent right because part of the voices in our head is always, am I being sold something? What's this person's mm -hmm. angle? Right. And uh, it's interesting because one of the things that, that I learned through the appreciative inquiry facilitation is the number one question somebody's asking himself when he walks into a situation is, am I safe? Am you know, do I belong? Am I safe here? You know, yeah. those are the two questions the person has. So as you're adding value, first of all, just being present makes people feel safe. Mm -hmm. And then when you don't have that angle going on in your head, then the person feels that lack of an angle. They feel safe. They feel comfortable. That's when they can become themselves. That's when they can drop their guard. Like, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I'm okay. But you could tell that, you know, it's like, all right, when are you going to start the sales pitch. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to find some way of excusing myself for talking to somebody else. And yeah. when the sales pitch never comes, they're like, wow, this person's really real. Talal's a real dude. I, I, I love that.
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and I think that happened with us, like the first time we connected and then immediately there was so much energy, so much connection that we're just like, dude, it's, it's like I've known Robert all my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you just start vibing off of people and then you become instant brothers, you know? Yeah. Even, even if we're across the ocean from each other, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? <laughs> the electronic connection. Exactly, exactly. And, and the other thing I want to mention here also is the fact that, you know, don't lose touch because what happens is a lot of the times when you actually get to meet new people, you start to lose touch with the people you met a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the important thing is not to lose touch and, and try and, you know, find some time, some way, uh, you know, just some excuse to just get in touch with them and say like, hey, how's everything going? Or what happened with that, you know, book you were working on or that project that you were about to launch? Like, just find some way of getting in touch with them because that's where people really find, you know, value in you because a lot of times you see somebody along the way and, 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 you know, you might connect with them for a bit, but then it dies. And I've had people like on my uh, LinkedIn uh, profile, I've had people leave me recommendations um, and they said like, you, I'm always benefiting from my relationship with Talal. Like he's always looking of some way of finding out. I've forgotten about Talal, but he turns around and he's always contacting me. He's like, oh yeah, I'll connect you with this podcast or I'll do this and I'll do that. And I don't do it so they can actually, you know, um, leave me recommendations on LinkedIn page. That's not the point. But the fact is it shows, like this proves that, you know, making sure that you keep in touch over the long term and try and add value to them, that's really different because nobody else will be doing that. People just do like have the relationship, have the conversation and then they walk away because that moment, those, uh, that little period of time in the short term was what was beneficial to them and then they walk away. Right, right. Yeah, you know, that's so true. It, you know, I've been joking about this. As you said, you know, I'm, I'm very active in the community of the other uh, high performance coaches with Brendan Burchard. Yeah. And I was at lunch with one of them uh, last summer. And, you know, I, I view her as, as the, the outdoorsy rock climbing runs uh, adventure retreats and everything. And we were at lunch and she's like, yeah, well, back when I was working for the CDC as an epidemiologist and I'm like, what? I didn't know anything <laughs> about any of that, you know? Yeah. And, and what I was reflecting on is that very often it's in the third, fourth, fifth conversations that you have with people that you really get to know some of the juice and some of who they are and what their origin story was. So yeah. it's, it's so important. I mean, this is our third conversation and I'm sure we're finding out things about each other that we didn't know in the, in the first and second conversations, even yeah. though we vibe really well. So you're, you're a hundred percent right. I think it's super important. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly at enough events and meeting enough people that it really isn't possible or practical to keep in touch with everybody. Mm. But there's this thing called intuition, which I've been dumbing down, particularly the corporate version of me that just like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, it's, it's logic, right? Like what I really need is I need a CRM and I want an Excel spreadsheet and I want to mm. keep, you know, like which is fine. I'm not, that, that actually is a good idea to keep track of people and when you've contacted them. So I'm not knocking that. But one of the things that I found the most important to do is to start trusting my intuition. When I'm at an event, I know the three or four people that are important to keep in touch with. It's like yeah. I just have this feeling about yeah. them afterwards. Yeah. It's like, this is somebody I need to be in touch with. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I will go out and I will intentionally send them a calendar link and say, hey, I love the time that we got to spend together. I know that there's so much going on at a networking event. Let's schedule another conversation. And then that yeah. conversation leads to another conversation, which leads to another conversation, which eventually leads to a relationship which can be transformational. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. super important. Uh, you know, maybe it sounds too woo woo to trust your intuition, but I'm not sure if I found a better way to, to do it than, than to do it that way. No, absolutely not. Because I think, you know, trusting your intuition is uh, really, really important. It's one of the most important things you can do when it comes to networking, because you'll see this, you know, at times there, you just get that feeling, right? There's that synchronicity yeah. and, and there's that energy, there's that connection. And you're just like, wow, this is amazing. And the way I, <laughs> The way I think about it, and this is going to sound super weird, is that if I go to a networking event, how many people do I want to hug before I say goodbye to them? 
And mm. if I want to give them a hug before I want to say goodbye to them, that's it. I want to stay in that, touch with that person. That's all I know. That's a great one. I love that. You, know, <laughs> I'm, you, don't, you don't even know this because we haven't had that many conversations, but I'm all about the hug. So uh, I, I love that. Thanks. That was, that was a great framework. I appreciate well, I'll, that. I'll send you a hug right now. Ah, uh, like cool. To you right now. <laughs> uh, I feel it. Thank you. You feel that? You feel that? Awesome. I feel it too, brother. I feel it too. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the ways I think about it. It's like, you know, I've connected with so many people because you do meet loads of people at a networking event. Mm -hmm. It's like how many people, you know, like is this person before I walk away, do I want to give them a hug? Like, do I feel like I, I, I've, 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 we have that connection? We have the energy where I, I can give them a hug. And if so, right, that's it. We're staying in touch. Like, that's that's how I talk about it, and it's gonna sound super weird, but that's how I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great framework. So uh, yeah, and 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 one of those great things that uh, you know to remember, it, it's not the conven conventional uh, networking advice. I don't think I've read that in any networking blogs or books or anything else. So uh, yeah. I love that. That that's some real inside solid information, you know. So yeah. you you gotta trust your intuition. It it it's there for a reason, right? It's there for a reason. Yeah. 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 One, one of the things that's been interesting for me is when I'm walking into an event, just assume that everybody in that event is amazing. Mm. Uh, and you know, it's easy to do when you're going to personal development events, as an example, uh, that it's like, why would that person even bother coming? Yeah. Unless they were into growing into learning into developing them, themselves. Uh, so maybe that's an accidental networking tip, but go to the events that you're inspired to go to because you're likely to meet other people that are inspired by the same things that you are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I would, you know, if I could assume that, uh, and, and I, I, I don't know really what even example to use, but let's say I went to an event where it was, um, real estate investing, you know, for me, which is something that I haven't been, focused on or doing, I'm going to meet a bunch of other real estate investors mm -hmm. uh, or, or something which I may not be interested in. But even then, as, and that's a perfect example is what are the one, what's the one thing that I know about people in real estate or what I've observed in people in real estate is that they're very into personal development because personal development and growing themselves helps them to be much more effective at their jobs. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to see the potential greatness in any event that I'm going to. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to real estate convention. I'm probably not going to know a lot about real estate. I'm not going to know about investing or financing or mortgages or any of that kind of thing. But I bet a lot of the people going into it are interested in personal development because they'll be more effective at their jobs. And so I'm going to connect to that part of them, the the part that that is amazing. And by going in with the assumption that everyone at this event is going to be amazing, I start looking for it and then it makes it that much easier to see it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it kind of brings us full circle to, to the thing that we talked about earlier, uh, which is the fact that when you go somewhere, you know, really come from a place of, you know, that you have some value to add to other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You do have some value to add to other people and establish a common ground, you know, that, that, that where you have shared experience. And in this case, it's personal development. Even though you're going to a real estate seminar, the common ground that you can establish is, you know, it's personal development. And that gets you, you know, in the room, start the conversation, et cetera, and, and build those connections. So it kind of brings mm -hmm. us full circle to what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I have to ask you, though, Robert, like who has been the the best sort of um, networking experience, as in like you connected with that person um, and it really turned out to be a super, um, you know, useful connection for you. Who was that person and how did you connect with them? Hands down, the, the thing, and it's, it's a category more than it is a particular person. Right, okay. Because I have so many amazing people in my life. Yeah. But the category is... Uh, it's, it's always been the experiences where I share uh, an experience with somebody at a, an educational event. So I'm going to give you a hard example because you were asking, you know, like who's the person or who's the set of people. Yeah. So uh, we were, in order for Brendan's high performance coaching, we go back every year 
to get recertified. And the year and, and the certification process is, you know, five, 10 to 12, maybe longer if you start counting dinners, uh, 10 to 12 hour days of training where you're training back and forth. So it's an experience that we're going through. Yeah. So one of the times knowing that this was impactful, I rented a giant mansion uh, near the location of the training. And I said, hey guys, I've got a place for 10 people. If anybody wants to share a house, we can share a house together. It saves some money on the hotel bills. And it gives us an experience together where we're being a family. We can have breakfast together. We can go back and forth. We can literally live together while we're going through this experience. Right. So fast forward, you know, you form a family like a brother and sister like relationship. And then from that, we decided to join a mastermind to practice group coaching, as an example, in that case, and how to build our coaching businesses together. And then that, that interaction, which then became a mastermind, which we met every two weeks on an ongoing basis, has been one of the most transformational things in my life because we're on this journey together. It's that hero's journey where we're all in a very similar place and we're yeah. training together. You know, the dragon just came and burned down our village. And we're not going to all run off in different directions to go kill the dragon. We're going to train together side by side. We're going to figure out what skills we need. We're going to identify the superpowers that this person has and this person has. And we're going to combine those superpowers. And together as a team, we're going to go on this journey. We're going to find him. We're going to slay the dragon. We're going to come back to the village as heroes. You know, it's that journey that you're going on together. So that singularly, the, the, the ability to mastermind and connect with people deeply has probably been the single biggest um, impact from me on a networking basis. And now I've formed three of those, you know, from live events that I've attended. So that, that's, that might not be the answer you're looking for, but that's been the single biggest uh, success with me on a networking basis is forming those kind of relationships. Yeah, I love it. I, I think that's a fantastic story. And it also, again, links back to what we talked about earlier. The fact that, you know, you want to go and you drop, you want to drop so much love on other people that they have no choice but to become your biggest fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, this is, this like is an amazing story. And I love the fact that you shared with us. So thank, thank you for that, Robert. Um, and I think networking, because it's got such a negative sort of uh, association in terms of like, it, it's where it's more of a um, exchange. It's more of a transaction. It has to be give and take. But what you don't realize is that, you know, when it comes to building any relationship and not just like business relationships, but when it comes to any relationship, you do have to invest a lot of time and energy and effort and money and resources, et cetera, et cetera, into building that relationship because it needs nourishment, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, it almost Absolutely. becomes like a living organism. You need to nourish it. You need to look after it. You need to care for it. And that's what you need to think about networking as, that networking is essentially building relationships. You're sowing seed. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to act like a farmer and look after your seeds. Otherwise, it, they will never grow into like plants and trees, and they will never bear you fruit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you're constantly contributing, constantly looking for ways to add value. And because that's kind of in your mind, then as you're saying, you know, like, uh, you know, as, as you're running through life, I'm thinking who would be good for Talal's show? And, you know, and I have already introduced yeah. a couple of people. It's like, oh, you should go check out my friend Talal. He's really great. You know, he has a great show. You might want to get on it, connect it. And that adds value. And, you know, it, it, I'm just going to reflect something that's interesting that, that just happened last week. And you brought it up. So when you have something to offer. So as you know, uh, I think the second episode we were doing, I'm really a fan of Appreciative Inquiry. I'm really yeah. a, a fan of the Flourishing Leadership Institute. And something interesting happened because I was at an live event and I was telling people about this crazy thing, Appreciative Inquiry, that I'm doing. And a lot of people were interested. So I sent an email to my mentor, John Berghoff, and I said, hey, John, uh, 
what's the best way to share this? What are some of the best links and resources? And do you have anything that I can send to people? And he said, well, if you're getting a lot of people interested, then I have a, uh, you know, I, I could do a Zoom call with the people that you, you bring to it and explain it to them and just do a little bit of a debrief on it. And yeah. I said, oh, that would be awesome. Mm. So now I had something to invite them to, which was so valuable to me that I could then share. So then I started thinking, well, who would benefit the most from attending, you know, this particular Zoom call? So I did. And I invited a bunch of people from the conscious capitalism movement. I invited high performance coaches. I invited friends that I knew were interested in growth and organizational development and personal development. So, and I told them all about this. Well, we had the webinar and we had um, 60 people sign up that were my friends to, to attend the webinar. Some of them said they couldn't be live, but they would watch the replay. Mm -hmm. So when we had the live webinar, uh, about 22 or 23 people showed up live, which was pretty much what I expected. What I didn't expect was that as soon as the webinar ended, my phone was like, boom, boom, boom. I'm getting, you know, like, like, look at this, you know, all these notifications, yeah. like what is going on? And then my Facebook messenger blew up and then I started getting emails from people and people were like, Oh my God, thank you for sharing that. That was so meaningful. That was so impactful. Thank you for including me. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. So it wasn't like I was pushing something on people. I was inviting them into something that had massive value to them. And when you do that and you're coming from that place of heart, that's, that's the kind of result you get. And it, the thing that it's making me think about is even if I have something to sell, if I'm selling my coaching, as an example, if I'm selling appreciative inquiry facilitation, as an example, yeah. if I know it is that good and that powerful, which I do or else I better not be doing it, then people will have the same response mm. when I invite them into this and share the opportunity. And if, if, if what I'm doing isn't so good, then, you know, shift that, make it that good where, where people are just like, Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that with me. That was such a great opportunity. That was so meaningful. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was one that was, yeah. was really helpful. Yeah, I can relate to that actually, Robert, because um, when it comes to like, you know, my show and uh, I've, I've had loads of people on it and, and the people I've had on it, they usually make recommendations just like you very kindly did. You introduced some of me to some of your friends. Um, mm -hmm. And when I have those people on now, that's like my very first interaction with them. And we then, you know, record a show, etc. cetera. And, and that goes live. But what I try to do is just try and really make it a you know powerful and impactful conversation a deep mm -hmm. conversation and what that does is that those people who i have you know only connected with for the very first time they turn around and they say you know what i've really enjoyed my time there you know i mm -hmm. loved it and i'm i'm actually going to go back and say thanks to you know so and so for connecting us cuz this was really powerful and i think that's really important as well that when you are thinking of other people and, and it might be the first time you're actually, you know, meeting them. And, and in your case, obviously you had friends coming to the webinar, but you mm -hmm. might be, it might be the very first time you're meeting this person, but when you're really truly being genuine, like it, they f it's felt people feel it. Yeah. They can sense it that, you know, this is, this is genuine. And then mm -hmm. what happens with my guests? And I mean, this is amazing is that they then say, Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll connect you to some of my friends. And I, I, I can think of a couple of people who might, who might be good for your show. So I'm like, Hey, great. Perfect. Let's, let's make it happen. Um, yeah. and it's, it's been so amazing where I have, you know, had really amazing people on like yourself and mm -hmm. they have then gone on to make more connections. But if I am really being genuine and trying to create a fantastic experience for whichever guest, then they, they, they will be happy to recommend me to other, other people. Right. That, that essentially, if you think about it, opens up your network exponentially because each new person you connect with, guess what? Their whole network has just opened up to you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that you shared that because, you know, it's funny when I, when I was just thinking about doing this, this webinar, what, I mean, one, one of the things that I didn't think about in terms of networking was just be so good, just be good, you know, yeah. not only do good, because that's obviously one as well, 
but just be really good at what you do so that the experience that people have with you makes it easy. And if you do get referrals from somebody else, you know, make sure that that person is somebody that you know will maintain the standards. Because that's, the, you know, like, I wouldn't recommend my friends to talk to you had I not had such a great experience on your show the first time and just mm. loved you so much and realized what a real guy you were. So then, you know, I felt totally comfortable. Like, hey, anyone in my network, you know, that, that would, would love to uh, do a show with you, it's like, yeah, I can recommend that they get on your show without hesitation because the experience was good and I knew that it would be good for them as well. Yeah, but here's the thing. It wasn't like I was trying to create this experience for you so you would recommend me to other people. It was just me being open and genuine, right? And yeah, that's exactly. really important. That it wasn't it wasn't fake. It wasn't, you know, kind of, uh, you know, fabricated. It was, it was genuine. And that's yeah. really important that you are being open and genuine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, following that, actually, I, I wanted to actually touch on one more thing, uh, which sometimes gets ignored simply because, again, it's an unconventional thing. And which is simply this, that most of the time you really are focused on your, as you call, target, right? I want to connect with this person because of X, Y, Z, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are different ways like you research them on social media and you try and connect with them and you try and find out more about where they're going to be at what point or what are they up to, what projects they're running and all sorts of other stuff, right? You try and add value to them. You try to be gen genuine and vun you know, vulnerable and open and curious and present. Like you can do all those things. But sometimes mm -hmm. you come across, you know, somebody who is just untouchable, unreachable, because guess what? They are so big in their industry or they're so busy that like they, they get thousands of requests from really amazing people, but you know, it, they all just are shoved to one side. Yep. So in one of those cases where I connect with somebody who is just super amazing. Um, and I, I still, still they, to this day, I can't believe that I had them on the show and, and I managed to build such a great relationship with them. What, what I did was I actually didn't necessarily focus on them. I focused mm -hmm. on other people or in this case, other uh, beings that, they, that, that were actually really close to them, that were really dear to them. Yeah. Right? So it could be, and I'm just generalizing here for people to, you know, um, people to see where I'm coming from. Like it could be their friends, it could be their family, it could be their spouse, it could be their children. And in my case, it was their pets. Mm. So, you know, sometimes folk, it's like really showing care. You can show, you know, care for that person by actually indirectly caring for somebody else that they are, you know, they really love. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And that's something else I wouldn't have thought of. So good. Mm -hmm. You're, 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 you're really delivering on things that's like, yeah, I like that. I have not, you know, yeah. but that's, that's a great way to do it. And, and, you know, one other thing that's similar to that, that mm -hmm. I've started doing uh, just because I, you know, I genuinely care about people too, but you know, I've been in situations where my friend said is now authors and Ted speakers and that podcasters. And uh, one of the things is like, darn, I haven't written a review of that person's book, which I read and I really like, mm. you know, so I, I took the time to write a review and post it on Amazon, you know, at which point the author contacted me, thanked me and said, Hey, you know, in this case, what's your address? Cause I want to send you a thank you card. And I'm like, it's really not necessary. I really did love your book. Yeah. Uh, but that's important for podcasters writing a review on the, the podcast. It's something that, that they need. It's something that's important to them. So again, it's always thinking about how can we be adding value to, to the person and not just directly, but you know, what, what can we do to support their mission, what they care about? Uh, oh, yeah. I love what you said, you know, the kids, their pets, uh, members of their team, you know, showing respect at an event to mm. the people on the team. Um, if anybody ever goes to any one of Brendan's events, uh, you don't know it until the second or third day, but his mom is helping to check you in and giving you badges and saying hi. So, you know, if you ever, if you ever are a jerk to somebody on your team, you could be, you could be literally, you know, being a jerk to Brendan's mom. Like, oh, yeah. That's not going to yeah. be, that's, that's, that's not a great way to, uh, <laughs> you know, and likewise, there are so many people, of course, now I know her and, you know, I've, chauffeured her and taken her to parties and various other things, which is cool. Uh, That's awesome, <laughs> they, man. That's we amazing. Her, we call her Mama B. 
because uh, she's like everybody's mom, particularly yeah. for the, the coaches. But, uh, but likewise, you know, just generally, I mean, like, ah, I don't want to say it as a negative. The thing that was coming to my mind initially is don't be an asshole, uh, but which, which is a negative, but just like, just be, be you. Like if you, if you want to deliver helpfulness and, and love and positivity, just be that guy and, and be yeah. that guy all along, mm. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, in, in this case, again, it wasn't just like, I was like, Oh, I, I, I can get in touch with this person. I can build a relationship or, or be their friend just by if I'm nice to their pets. It was genuine. Like I, I'm a cat lover. I love cats. Uh, I have a cat. Um, and, uh, you know, they, uh, this person who's absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing. They have cats. So, um, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to send, send some presents over. And I genuinely like took a lot of time. I handcrafted the, the, you know, I bought the present, handcrafted the gift, gift box. I put like a day's work into it. It wasn't just like I, I bought a present and shipped it off. Like I put about a whole day's work into it, going there, going to different shops, looking at the right size boxes, then actually bought a lot of stuff and handcrafted the, the, the boxes, which the present was, was going to be wrapped in. And then I sent it off with a handwritten note. Right. So, nice. Yeah. And, and that was genuine. Like it, it, it wasn't something like, Oh, it's, it's a, you know, um, kind of like a sleazy networking strategy. It, it, yes, it is a networking strategy if you use it properly because it gets you results and it did get me results. And that's why I'm sharing it. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. That's uh that's a mind expanding idea. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you just have to look at, uh, here's the thing, because of social media, it makes it a lot easier for you to see what they care about. Maybe they care about a charity, right? Yeah. So like, you know, see how you can actually add value to the charity, mm -hmm. but be genuine about it. Like, don't, don't be just like, oh yeah, if I add value to the charity, you know, and I can send them a note afterward and say, Hey, look, I donated so much money to your charity. You know, let's, let's jump on a call. Like, that's not how it works is you have to be genuine. So it's like, this is a charity. I can relate to this. You know, and, and I want to make a contribution, a genuine contribution. So you go ahead, you make the contribution. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah. The, 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 you know, the stars just align for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's so appropriately timed that you say that too, because today is my birthday, actually. And uh, <laughs> I, I posted on Facebook that, uh, that I'm chairman of a, a, a nonprofit. Yeah. And I was actually asked to chair the nonprofit because of my appreciative inquiry work and the ability to bring the team together. And that's what I posted on Facebook. It's like, I don't really want anybody to give me gifts, donate to the charity, mm. if, if, you know, and that's what I'm really looking for. And, and so, you know, now I've gotten, I don't know, geez, you know, let me, let me just even take a quick look, but you know, I don't know how many people have donated. I think um, last, last time I checked, it was in yeah. hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was in hundreds last time I checked. But yeah, I mean, happy birthday. I didn't bring it up because I wasn't sure you want to mention that over here. But yeah, happy <laughs> birthday, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome, you know. And, and yeah. yeah, quite a few. Yeah, I'm looking at 19 or 20, 29 people, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a cool thing, you know. It, it, look for what people... And I think really what we're saying is not just any particular strategy, but we're really saying be super curious about what it is that people care about. And then if you can help to amplify what they care about. And very often, you know, if you're networking with the right people, they care about a mission that's bigger than themselves. And yeah. how can you help support that mission and get behind it? So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think if we were to summarize everything, Robert, like, you know, I, I, and, and you can summarize it in your words, but if I was to summarize it in my words, the whole thing with networking and all the different strategies and everything we've discussed here, it boils down to this. Be a good person who is curious about helping others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I, I, I would, I would probably say, you know, summarizing it, don't have a strategy. The strategy is don't have a strategy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and really just focus on being you, being whole with yourself, being happy with yourself, and being the kind of person that is constantly adding value and just show up as you, mm. you know, yeah. without a strategy. That, 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 that just being you, you'll attract. You know, and, and here's the funny thing. I, I guess I was thinking about this with networking. Me just being me, 
at an event is awesome because eventually I'm going to be me. So if the person gets to know me and they like that, then we're going to have the basis of an ongoing relationship. Mm. If they are, and if, if I'm acting some way or showing up as something that's different than who I really am, eventually in our relationship, they're going to say, well, wait, you were acting this way at the beginning in this networking event, but now you're a different person. And I don't, yeah. you know, I, so why not just go ahead and repel the people that are not vibing with who you are and attract the people that are vibing with who you are. And we're all good. And that's the basis of, of that long lasting bond and relationship with each other. Oh yeah, absolutely. I totally agree because if there's no alignment from the beginning, then there's no point in pursuing that any further. Right. Yeah. Because eventually it's going to, it's going to fall apart anyway. So, you know, you have to make sure that there's alignment from the beginning. And if there is alignment, then, you know, I, I like to go all in. And if there is an alignment, then I'm just like, Hey, you know, it's not a problem. Um, I'm sure I, I can go and, and, uh, you know, build a relationship with somebody else. And if this was just not meant to be, I mean, things, you know, happen for you, not to you. So if, if that's yep. what you're achieving, then this wasn't happening for me. Uh, something else will happen for me. I just need to go and look for it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was good. You, you delivered. I really appreciate that. You know, we, we talked <laughs> at the beginning of this, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's not do the conventional networking advice. Let's do some of the things we learned from experience that maybe is, is not necessarily conventional. So, oh this yeah, it was great. I learned some stuff. It was fun. Absolutely. And, and before, before we go, I want to, you know, again, add value to you because uh, you're my brother and I, I, I genuinely care about, you know, your, you and your cause and your mission. So I want to add value to you. So one thing I would say is you did this amazing webinar with John Berghoff about appreciative, appreciative inquiry, which I will, you know, recommend people to go check out. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, absolutely amazing. I'll put the links below so people can go and check out the different websites and stuff. But, um, when you actually say arrange another webinar, whether you do it by yourself or with John Berghoff or with somebody else, what you can do is the people who have attended or people who have seen the replay, you can ask them to invite their friends because guess what? They've already had an awesome experience. You've got mm. the evidence to prove it, but they can now confidently start to share it with their network. But you can encourage that by saying, hey, here's the link. Make sure you share it with you know other people who you think might be interested or you might find this content valuable. And what that would do is suddenly instead of 60 people, you will have 600 people on the next webinar right yeah so true i like that yeah so i agree i appreciate that yeah no problem no problem at all anyway um guys this has been an absolutely amazing conversation we had a blast and to be honest with you i'd love to stay on and talk more with robert and and we can dig deep and really add value to you guys because that's what we are here to do to serve you guys and help you along with your journeys but uh, Robert's time is very precious. He's got to run back to the event. So um, I just want to say, Sir Robert, thank you so much for actually making the time on your birthday in the middle of a three-day event to come <laughs> and have this conversation with me. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm sure we'll go uh, for, for another conversation sometime soon in the future uh, because we just have so much to talk about. Uh, but really, really enjoyed this. And guys, uh, make sure you share it with other people. Subscribe to the channel because it helps us grow. and. It allows me to bring on more amazing guests so we can have this conversation with them. Uh, but with that, once again, I just want to say thank you for sharing this time with me. Robert, this was absolutely amazing, brother. It was awesome. It's always fun. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be many more. <laughs> there will be many more. So with that, guys, give us some feedback and tell us what was your biggest takeaway? What was your best networking uh, tip or networking strategy that you are going to be using uh, in your life to upgrade your network. We'd love to hear from you. With that, stay awesome, hustle hard, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, guys.